Hi, it's Gavin from Le Petit Turf here. I've decided to record my Lightroom editing process today. So what I'm going to show you is the basic process I go through from start to finish when I've taken some photos. Uh, this is uh, some, these are some shots I took last week of Cheese Toasty. So first thing I do is I select my favourite images and get rid of the ones I don't want. I do that by filtering them. So what I do is down here you can filter your images and all of them are unrated at the moment. So I'm gonna set it to unrated. So now at the bottom, it'll only show me images which I've not given a rating to. Okay, so this first one, I'm not very keen on the gap there. So I'm gonna give that a one. So it gets rid of that. That's a bit better. Got more cheese on it. Well, that's quite nice with the paper. I quite like this one though. I'm gonna give that a five and the paper's nice. Skim through, okay. So I reckon that one. And we need to keep one with the gray card and you'll see why shortly. So these ones over here I don't like, I'll give those ones zeros. Uh, ones, uh, sorry, ones. <laughs> and as you can see, as I give these ones, they disappear off the screen. As you see this list getting shorter, don't like that because it's a bit of a rubbish angle. There's not much going on. That's again, it's nothing going on. This is getting better. We've got some action there. My hand looks a bit ugly, so I'm gonna get rid of that. That's quite nice, although you can't really see the cheese very well. Let's see, that's got a bit more stretch. That's a better angle, maybe. This is looking better, that's looking better. I think these ones are better. Yeah, that is nice. I think that's my favourite, that one there. And I'll just keep the, um, the grey card and I think I might stop at that. So I'll get rid of all these ones, give those all ones and they'll all disappear. Okay, so then what you can do now is change unrated to rated and set everything that's got a five star. So then that now just shows me the images which I gave a five star to. So first thing I do is we use this gray card. Now, as you can see, every image I've taken the same image with a gray card in shot. And the reason for this is the gray card allows us to adjust the color using the eyedropper. So I select that go to a point on the grey card, select that, and it adjusts the colour. As you can see, the skin tones over here have become very natural suddenly, and it's adjusted the colour. So what we have now is we've got the white balance, we've got the uh, temp colour temperature and the tint. So what I can do is I can take these two figures here and put them into this one. Uh, was it minus six? Yeah, minus six. And therefore that is now being color adjusted. So I can get rid of this one, because I don't need that anymore. And I can do the same here as well. Take that eyedropper, drop it on there. Watch the, as I click, watch. See the colors just change slightly. Undo that, you see it's a bit, it's a bit sort of gray, a bit sort of off, a bit neutral, you know. And then once we give it, click this, just gets that natural warmth back into it. These were shot with natural light. Got this, the window over to the right-hand side of the screen. And this one, so 5850 and plus three. So let's just put that in there. And there we go. That is looking much more natural as well. So, okay, so let's get rid of that. So there we go. So now we've got just the three images with basic white balance adjustment has been done. So, next thing, crop. I'm not entirely happy with this because I really didn't frame it very well. So I want to bring that up there. Get really quite tight because there was all this, all this space down the bottom here, which was just, it wasn't nice neutral space, it was just empty space. So there, we've got that filling the frame, that's a lot nicer. This is, these two are nice. I mean, these are quite, these have got, I feel these have got a nice balance of negative 
and positive space. I'm just going to bring it in a little bit. You know, that's the thing as while well, you've got to remember with photos, you can always crop them in slightly, especially if you're using them on a blog. You can always crop in, but you can't add something else. You can't add space to a photo. Okay, so I think that brings that in there, just adds a bit more focus on it. I wonder if that needs even a tiny rotate, because that the cocktail stick was just slightly. Does that look better like that? I think that does look a little bit better. There's no <laughs> there's no rules to this, you know. What do you think looks good? Okay, so we've done that. Now I'm gonna focus on this one for the time being. So we've got exposure. I leave that one for the time being. I adjust that one last. Contrast. Generally with food, contrast can go up quite a lot. Uh, of That's too much. But you can see around, I think around there, just giving us that extra crispness. It has gone darker and that's why I adjust the exposure last because exposure is where we can compensate for any any issues we do get further down. So I'll just reset that one. Highlights, again, often goes up a little bit, but you have to be very careful because you can blow out, you see the cheese here, you can start to lose all the detail in the cheese and we don't want to do that. So we can turn it up a little bit. Shadows often I will uh, take them up, which as you can see, take down, makes the shadows darker, take it up, makes them lighter. Often with food, I feel it's nicer when you open up the shadows, you get more, a bit more light in there. Whites as well, go up a little bit, but you face the same problem with the, you see we go there, obviously that's horrible, you lose everything, but you take the whites down, it just can be a bit dull, you want, the right, full range of darks and lights. Okay, and blacks, I often go down with blacks now because it gives more depth to the image. You make those, the dark bits have real sort of, real depth and uh, just give something an extra sort of uh, a surreal, surreality to the image. Clarity, always goes up except for unless you want something that looks a bit floaty and you know soft focusy you can see that in the bread when you look at the bread here you know when you really take that up you can see how that becomes almost hyper real so let's take that to about there vibrance often up a little bit especially an image like this down you losing your color again it's if you want sort of the dreamy look, you might want to take vibrance down a little bit, but in general, I go up, saturation up just a little bit normally because with saturation it goes horrible if you take it up too quickly. So there we have basic adjustments. Now, I think if we look at the histogram here, you can see this is all, this left hand side is dark, so this is black, as you can see there, blacks. This end is white. Uh, and highlights and as you can see so what we want is we actually want this to be a little bit further across to the right it's a bit dark you can see it at the moment through the dark areas of the image we just want to increase this just a little bit not too much there we go I think around there so that's a third of a stop yeah that's looking good now what I feel is looking at that is that Mr. Gherkin is looking a bit sorry for himself. So what we'll do is we'll go first to the adjustment brush and we will make a mask for Mr. Gherkin. So that's a simple case of adjusting the brush to the size you want. Now let me select that and then just you paint on your mask which is the area you want to deal with, the area you want to adjust. Paint that on like that, and there we go. So you can see what that is. 
So now deselect that. Although I've deselected, you can't see it as red anymore. Uh, it's the area is still there. So now we have this adjustment palette, and this will only adjust the bit that I've just selected. So for instance, if I take that there, we can make Mr. Gherkin really bright green, which is, I think it needs a, to be a little bit greener. It's a bit sort of like, a bit grim really. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a bit more yellow in there as well. Give it a little bit more. But also I think a bit more saturation, which we didn't want on the rest of the image because it goes a bit over the top, but this gherkin will take some more saturation. And even I think a little bit, it wasn't quite enough light on it as well. So there we go, I think somewhere around there. And what you can do is you can um, turn this off and on to see. So there's where we started, and that's how I've adjusted it to. It could do that, I think it could do a little bit more, um, Contrast, give it a bit more. Yeah, I think there. Okay, next thing I do is sharpening. Now, sharpening again with an image like this, uh, you can, you what you can do, you can sharpen the whole image, which is uh, just down here. You can adjust the sharpening now. When you adjust that, that adjusts everything we see. Now, I don't particularly want to increase the sharpening on the wood here, on the chopping board. I don't want to. I don't really want to do any of that. In fact, that I'm going to turn that off completely. Again, I'm going to use the adjust, adjustment brush, which is K on the keyboard, to make another mask so that it is only. Let's get that up so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, which is only on. Again, you don't have to be too accurate on this stuff. Uh, on the toasty, because that's all I want to sharpen. Maybe a bit of the paper as well, because we want to get some texture in there. I think it'll look nice with some texture anyway. Right. So, so there we go. We've got that very, very straightforward. And let's get rid of those and get rid of that. So then what we can do is if we zoom in so you can see what's going on and just move that down to, let's say there, that should be a good place to see. So then here's our sharpness adjustment. So if I take that right up, you can see how that's gone. It's actually gone okay. Sometimes you take it all the way up and you, you start getting, you can see it here a bit. You can see the noise, it's a bit sort of, uh, artificial the way it's beginning to look so let's wind it back a little bit see I mean look good it looks quite soft now going back that's how it was it looks quite soft so I think we could take quite a lot of sharpening on here I'm gonna take it up to there 66 okay we have that now next thing is um, I'm going to, I always remove chromatic aberration. That's when you get purple fringes around things. Doesn't always happen, but I just do it anyway. Now, enabling profile corrections. What this does <coughs> is it adjusts the image for any distortions, because sometimes with lenses, they make the image just very slightly rounded, or you might get, corners might get dark from the, uh, <coughs> from the, aperture you're using. So if we click this, you'll see the corners of my image went slightly lighter. Um, that, you see, I think this image actually works nicely with that slightly, with the darkened corners. So I'm going to go down to the post crop vignetting. And what this does, I'm just going to leave this as it is. You can, uh, you can have various different other options. Um, so I'm going to just come down here and bring those corners in slightly. See these, you can adjust. What you can do is, if I take the extreme, you can adjust the midpoint so that makes it wider or sharp or narrower. Uh, you can adjust how round or oval it is. And you can adjust how light the feather is so it's very sharp 
or very soft. So with this, let's actually go, let's go to about there, just gentle. Okay, and I'm gonna go back up, you know, I'm gonna take the exposure up just a little bit more. I feel like it's just a tad underexposed. You can press on your keyboard, there's a, the Alt button. If you hold that down and then you make the adjustment, the screen goes black and then it will show you as areas lose all detail, they show up they, like that, as you can see. But, but that would be way too bright, in my opinion. I think around there. So, let's go to the before and after shot, you can see. There we go. So that is left hand side is how we started the right hand side is where we have ended up there are more things that i might adjust depending on the style of the image this i wanted to be quite a strong natural image so that's why i've gone the route i had um, if i wanted a more characterful image i might have gone for a soft light or i might have even gone for split toning which split toning is where you can you can change the color of the highlights and the lowlights. Oh, and also this would have been another way to have adjusted the gherkin. So this isn't split toning, but what you can do is you can select specific colors. Now, because the gherkin is the only instance of green in this image, we could have used this as well. As you can see there, if I wind that up, you're getting a little bit more green in the gherkin. So that actually would have been another way of adjusting that. Although it's a kind of slightly yellowy green color, so maybe it would have been bit of yellow but then yellow would adjust the bread so there we go that's one way of doing it uh, split toning is another way what you can so you take the highlights and select the color you want for the highlights so let's say we wanted to go for a bit of a slightly rustic image select a yellow and then for the shadows you select maybe like a orange like that and then you adjust how much between the two of them. Yeah, let's see, so there we go. The saturation, you can adjust the balance between the dark. So I would say, you know, for a slightly more rustic looking image, maybe we go something like that. But I don't want to do that. I'm just <laughs> showing you. So let's get rid of those. And there we go. The finished image. So then from there, what I do, once I've got my image is I then do Apple E, uh, sorry, Apple Shift E, oops, do Apple Shift E, which is export. And here I've got three settings. I've got a blog preset, high res JPEG preset, and a low res JPEG preset. And these, so the blog ones, they are the right size to publish on my blog. High res JPEG are for reference, basically, they are highest quality uncompressed images, and low res JPEGs are basically somewhere in the middle. They're, they're high quality, uh, they're too large, the file size is too large to use on my blog, but they are good to use elsewhere online because they're a really high quality image. So that is it. That is how I basically adjust my images. There's obviously more and maybe I'll do some other ones, but I thought you guys might enjoy seeing exactly what I do. And these will be on my blog very shortly along with this video. All right, and uh, I hope you all have an awesome weekend. Take care. Okay, bye.